Example 17.6. In this example, we have a wall that has 3 meters in height and 5 meters in width. This wall is made out of repetitive sections, which are made out of brick, which have a cross-sectional area of 22 centimeters by 16 centimeters. The bricks are separated by a 3 centimeter thick plaster layer. The bricks also have a 2 centimeter layer in each side of the bricks. In addition, there is a 3 centimeter uh, rigid foam on the inner side of the wall. The inner and the outer temperatures are given to be 20 and 10 Celsius respectively. And we have convection heat transfer coefficients in the inner and the outer sites to be 10 and 25 watts per meter square Kelvin respectively. We need to determine the heat rate of heat transfer through the wall. We're assuming this case to be a steady, one-dimensional, it has constant properties. We're going to neglect radiation and we are going to assume that the depth of the wall is equal to one meter. In order to solve this problem, we're going to use thermal resistances. We start on the left side in which we have the temperature in the inner side. Then we have the first resistance. That resistance is going to be a convection resistance from the air to the phone. Then we have R1. R1 is the conduction resistance taking place in the phone. Then we have R2, which is the conduction resistance taking place on the side of the plaster. Once we are in this intersection over here, we could simply go either inside of the brick, up in the plaster, or down in the plaster. That's why we have three parallel resistances. R3 and R5 are the conduction resistances in the plaster, and R4 is the conduction resistance in the brick. And we go to the other side of the brick and then we have R6 which is the conduction resistance inside of the brick and then RO is the convection resistance on the outside. Notice that basically this resistance uh, repeats itself in this particular section and then it goes as many times until the complete section uh, goes to the height of the wall which is 3 meters. Okay, so we're going to evaluate each one of the resistances. We're going to start with Ri, once again, is the convection resistance. So we have 1 over Hi times the cross-sectional area. The cross-sectional area that we have is the 22 centimeters plus 1.5 plaster in the top plus 1.5 at the bottom. Notice that this is symmetry, so we're only going to take this section from here to here. So we replace and we have 1 over 10 watts m square k. And once again, the cross sectional area is going to be 25 centimeters and we assume the depth to be 1 meter. So that gives us a cross sectional area of 0.25 meter square. And that gives us a convection resistance of 0.4 Celsius over watts. R1 is the conduction resistance for the plaster. I'm sorry, for the foam. So it's going to be the length of the foam, the K of the foam times the cross sectional area. In this particular moment, the length of the foam is 0 0.03 meters. The uh, conductance. Conductivity of the foam is given to be 0 0.026 watts mk. And the cross-sectional area, once again, is for the whole foam. That is equivalent to 0.25 meters square. This is equal to 4.62 Celsius over watts. The next resistance is going to be R2 which is the conduction resistance in the plaster. That is going to be LP, KP times A. So the thickness of the plaster is going to be, from the sides is 0 0.02 meters, or two centimeters, as you can see over here. And then we divide it by 
22 watts mk and the cross-sectional area again is 0.25 meters square. That gives us a resistance of 0.36 Celsius over watts. So now notice that R2 is exactly the same value of R6 since the material is plaster and the thickness is exactly the same. So R2 is equal to R6. Okay. Now we're going to calculate R3. R3 is the conduction that takes place on the plaster. So if you think about it, once you're here, you could go on the plaster over here before you come down over here. So R3 is going to be the length of the plaster, K of the plaster, and A. Now, the length that it travels, it goes from here to here. So the length that it travels is 16 centimeters. And the cross-sectional area is different, is 1.5 centimeters times a depth of 1 meter. So this is why there are different resistances. So once again, the length is 0.16 meters. The value of K is exactly the same, 0.22 watts mK. And the cross-sectional area is different, it's 0.015 meters square. And this gives us a value of 48.48 Celsius over watts. Notice that this cross-sectional area, this resistance is the same thing at the top and at the bottom. So this means that R3 is the same thing as R5. Now we calculate R4, which is the resistance going through the brick. And that is going to be the length of the brick, K of the brick, and the cross-sectional area. The length of the brick, once again, goes from this point to here, so it's 16 centimeters. The K of the brick is given to be 0.72 watts mK, and the cross-sectional area is the height we have from here to here, which is 22 centimeters, times uh, the depth, which is one meter, so it's 0.22 meter square and this gives us 1.01 .01 Celsius over watts. Then the only resistance that we have left is the resistance of convection on the outside. So we calculate that one as HO, I'm sorry, RO and is equal to 1 over HO times A and then we have 1 over 25 watts m square k and once again the resist the cross-sectional area is the whole section which is 25 uh, centimeters times 1 meter per depth so it's 0.25 meter square and this gives us 0.16 celsius over watts so now we have the whole values of all the resistances in order to calculate the total resistance First, we have to add the three resistances that are in parallel. So we're gonna uh, add this and we're gonna call it um, R total one. So this section over here, the addition of those three sections is going to be one over R3 plus one over R4 plus one over R5, okay? If we do this calculation so substitute, we find that this uh, total one, this addition once again of the parallel sections, it is going to be equal to 0 0.9696 96 Celsius over watts. Okay, now we could add that total resistance plus the addition of Ri, R1, R2, R6, and Ro to give us a final R total. So it's going to be Ri plus R1 plus R2 plus R total 1 plus R6 plus Ro. And if we take all those values, we find that the total resistance is going to be equal to 6.87 Celsius over watts. So now notice that we're going to be able to find the value of the heat transfer 
uh, rate. So it's going to be delta T over the total resistance. The total delta T is the difference between the outer and the inner uh, values of the temperature. So we have 20 Celsius and the outer temperature is negative 10 Celsius. And the total resistance we calculated to be 8.6.87 uh, Celsius over watts. So it tells us that this value is going to give us 4.37 watts. Now notice that this value was evaluated for an area that is equivalent to 0.25 meters square. Remember, it's only for this small section. And so we have to make sure that we evaluate it for the total area of the wall. So in order to do that, what we need to find is we need to find something called the flux. The flux is the relationship between Q dot divided by the area that it belongs to. So we're going to have 4.37 watts divided by the area that this belongs to, 0.25 meters square. And we find that this flux is equal to 17.5 watts per meter square. So now what we're going to do is we're going to find out the heat rate that takes place in the whole wall. So once again, so let's understand the areas. The area that we are evaluating, so notice that this is the small section of the wall that we're doing, right? So this is the small section that we're doing. This one has a cross-sectional area, so we assume it to be one meter in depth, right? That's the assumption that we had. He had, in total, he had 25 centimeters in height, and then the distance, the total thickness that he's going to have is going to be um, 23 centimeters for the thickness that he's going to have, right? So notice that for the whole, this is the section that we have. The whole wall now that we are going to evaluate, so imagine that this is a much bigger wall. The thickness of it is going to is stay exactly the same, right? So this is still going to be 23 centimeters. What is gonna change now, this is now going to be three meters in height, and now the width now goes to five meters. Okay, so notice that when we use, use one meter, it was for the original evaluation, and we only use this 25 centimeters for, for that particular section. Now we have to make it into the whole wall. So that means that when we evaluate, instead of having the section, a, a section of 0.25 meters square as the area, now we have an area for the wall that is three meters by five meters. So it's 15 meters square. Right? And we are going to find now the corresponding Q that goes to that size of that wall. That is going to give you the 17.5 watts per meter square, right? And we multiply it by the total amount of the area that we have for the wall given. And we find that this amount of heat rate is equal to 263 watts. So it's very important that you, not, that you understand what is the type of area that you use for a particular problem, for a particular section, and then how to transfer from heat rate to flux um, and make it flux is dependent on the area. And then by multiplying by the appropriate area, you will be able to calculate the heat rate, which is independent of area.